weather cold, the weather so chill, chilly, willy, penguin, feather road. Cause I'm sipping pro, yeah, that meth is pro. Pro methazine, yeah, stepping stone. Oh, they acting up, get your weapons wrong. They only killing time, another second gone. I heard your man at home, now you melaton, but you acting young. And you hella grown. <laughs> Social heritage. Social heritage. What, What is, is social, social heritage? heritage? My tongue is still within my mouth. Deciding to work with social heritage, we created our aim, the foundation of this project. We sought answers to the question, what is social heritage? And wind it up at the University of Opal. Morten Ernest, professor of sociology and social work, helped us answer fundamental questions in regards to social heritage and its impact to society. Ja, hej, du snakker med Victoria og Emma fra Randum Efterskole. Hvad er social arv egentlig? At social arv har så mange betydninger, som man øh, øh, med et øh, kan betegne det som et så bredt at det faktisk er meningsløst. Man kan godt tale om social arv, <coughs> og så kan man mene, at øh, det er arv af uddannelsesniveau, øh, men man kan også mene, at det er arv af kriminalitet, eller det er arv af stofmisbrug, og så kan man tale om, at, øh, at børn og unge har en forskellig chance for at øh, Harris is making history as the first black woman. India is growing and changing fast. Institutions like the caste system have been outlawed, yet caste discrimination and segregation still occurs. Can you see around? Social heritage varies in impact around the world. Considering cultural perspectives, we chose three different countries to work with in our project. The United States of America, India and Denmark. These three countries each have different obstacles and advantages when it comes to social heritage. This we wanted to show through interviews with students who themselves face these challenges on a daily basis. We live in a society where you constantly get influenced by the people around you and like what people say, what people think, and this idea of fitting in and figuring out what is it I do and I say so I kind of make the most out of what I have. You can never achieve something if you never go out and pursue it. I um, never felt limited from where I come from. I'm also a female, which can be, um, finding a job make it very hard because I, I'm less respected sometimes. You brought up more males are always doing i don't think many expectations have been set for me as a person. My family doesn't really have any set expectations for jobs. Don't think that the American dream is realistic. Even though America does have a wide variety of job opportunities, which is great, the um, education and healthcare alone in America is super expensive and it makes it very hard to have like, a solid living. I don't feel a big pressure to live by what other people expect from me, but I do think there comes a certain extent of you should make the most of the opportunity you get when you live in a very kind of fortunate country. I think that if some people knew that I was Jewish, then that might have some sort of effect on me. I feel very lucky and fortunate to live in a society where I've been given lots of opportunities and the place and space and freedom to do a lot of the things I want and to figure out what it is I want. As mentioned earlier, we wanted to find the difference of social heritage limiting prosperity around the world. Denmark and the US had differences in terms of education and healthcare, but India stood out for us. India is a Det 
for our Indian perspective and social heritage, we had gotten in contact with Jerome, who is the founder of the Arc Home, a home for girls with HIV AIDS. Hi, my name is Ari Priya. My native place is Vellore. I'm studying fourth standard. I don't have anybody to take care of me and I cannot study. I don't know anything. So I came here to look after my life. In my school, all the students are making fun of me and neglecting me, which is so painful for me. Uh, if I come close to them, they are going away from me. And sometimes my teacher will tell to everyone, don't cough in front of others, don't do like this, like that. But in my native town, my people will, at least they will come close to me. Here, in my school, I am so fed up. I don't um, feel very happy with the students around me. I am so lucky to be here and uh, I advise other uh, small girls like me, they should be happy and they will have a great life. My native place is called Pallavaram. I am 13 years old. One thing is I am not feeling well. I am sick and I cannot study if I am at home. And nobody is there to uh, support me in my home. And I like Max. I wanted to study Max. And I will do my will in Max. So I came here. Through my father and mother I got this HIV AIDS. And I am taking tablet for this taking tablet regularly i'm okay now being happy having life here society will never allow me to grow up or to be happy i know very well because i'm having hiv aids but with the support of my daddy nigel and uh, here i am getting very good education food and healthy life so i can achieve my goal as much as possible of course when all the dark clouds roll away so social heritage isn't just one thing modern anna's help us understand that making the interviews gave us an insight on regards to how young people are affected by this because there is a big difference some don't even know the term because they've never experienced it. Others know that society won't let them grow up. They know that society will make their life as hard as possible. But they fight back. And that is what is going to break the system created by social heritage. my head.